Wow. It isn't often that a good movie blows expectations out of the water. Seldom, really, since the last time in recent memory was Joker, which was, wow, three years ago. You can count on one hand the number of good or great films that come out in a single year, and The Northman seeks to claim a seat among the coveted pantheon. A longtime passion project of interest for Alexander Skarsgård, with his own fascination of Viking history and lore, has sought out a project in which he could show off not only his acting chops, but also unleash his inner murder boner. Enter The Northman. Ethan Hawke plays Orvindil, the king of a Viking settlement, returning from a distant campaign and is greeted by his wife Gurdjian and their son Amleth. Shortly after his arrival, his brother Fjolnir appears to give Hawk the good old Mufasa treatment. This sets Amleth on a path of vengeance where he will rely not only on his brute strength but his wits and patience as well in a morally grey world in which people are good or bad based on your own virtues. The Northman does not shy away from brutality. These are Vikings, after all, and not the kind that choke in the playoffs. No, these are real Vikings. The kind that would fight a bear if it looked at him wrong, and would burn down a hall full of children like a daycare worker who finally had enough. And yet, much of what is shown is done in an almost dignified manner, unless they deserve it. <laughs> then it's poignant. Dude bro's about to run a train on a spoil of victory? Well, the camera will pan away from that, but a predatory killer trying to gut Amleth when he's a kid? Well, time to make like the Red Queen and off with his nose. And to emphasize this detail, the actors brought their A-game. I don't often voice more than a couple throwaway remarks about acting, but everyone here pulls out all the stops to make sure you feel and believe you are part of the adventure. Skarsgård looks like he was the only bouncer a Monomarth needed, Ethan Hawke and Willem Dafoe are great despite their limited use, and the rest of the cast crush it, even in the minor roles. Being based on the Skaldic sagas of old, the director had the foresight to bring in a small team of consultants to ensure a great level of accuracy and respect to the history of the Vikings. For example, berserker rituals to hype themselves up the night before a battle, Valkyrie wearing braces, and white people being forced into slavery. Wait a minute, that one isn't accurate at all. Valkyrie never wore braces. Well, depending on rank, of course, apparently Vikings actually filed either dashes or chevrons into their teeth. So yes, the team comprised of an archaeologist, historian, and folklorist definitely know what they're talking about. So if you are like myself and focus on accuracy, then the film definitely checks that box off as far as I know. Also, apparently Amleth is the direct inspiration for Hamlet. Go figure. But as we all know, no movie is perfect. Perhaps my biggest gripe about the film is, oddly enough, the enunciation. Everyone speaks in guttural, growling whispers like they're bellowing crocodiles in mating season. Like the names I mentioned earlier, like Orvindil and Gurdrin. Yeah, I didn't catch those until I looked them up. Others like Amleth or Fjolnir are repeated enough that I caught them, but this also might just be me since listening to anything heavier than John Bon Jovi requires a few listens. Also, there are some super cheap effects on display. Like a water splash that looks like something you would have downloaded for free from an After Effects thrift shop 10 years ago. You'd think for 90 million dollars, Eggers could hire somebody that could make, you know, fire. Now, not that lackluster effects like those really take away from the quality of the plot, acting, historical accuracy, cultural respect, directing, camera work, or anything else that really went into making The Northman the damn good movie that it is. Looking for things to complain about in this movie is like trying to find that tiny speck of coal in an otherwise flawless diamond. And by the end of it, you're just amazed at how good this movie is, and equally how depressing it is this movie is going to financially bop. And what a shame, since movies that are less deserving are going to succeed like Sonic 2. You can hear my thoughts on the film at the link over there, and how despite its flaws, it actually is better than its predecessor. And don't forget to like, share, ring the bell, and subscribe for more movie reviews.